We've talked about the different kinds of variables in JavaScript in the previous few videos in the series. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the data that these variables hold. JavaScript divides data types into two main categories, primitives and objects. There are seven primitive types in JavaScript, number, string, big int, boolean, undefined, null, and symbol. Numbers include integers as well as floating point numbers within this range. The string type is used to represent text. Big int is used to store integers that are outside of the range of the number type. Then we have undefined, which is used to represent values that are uninitialized. The null type is also used to represent an absence of value and is explicitly assigned by the developer. The symbol type is used to create unique and immutable values, generally used as the keys for objects. We're not going to be covering these different primitive data types in details. In this video, we are going to cover the difference between primitives and objects. We've taken a look at the primitive data types. Now let's talk about objects. Objects allow you to represent more complex data in the form of key value pairs. Here's an example of an object. Const user here is an object that has two keys or two properties, username and display name. In this case, both of these two properties hold a string data type. We can also add another property called followers that holds a value of the number data type, thus forming a more complex data structure. One thing to note here is that arrays in JavaScript are not a primitive data type. Arrays are just a form of objects in JavaScript. Similarly, functions are also objects in JavaScript. Functions are a special type of objects that have the ability to be callable, which means that you can execute or call a function using the parenthesis syntax. You can check the type of different types of values in JavaScript using the type of operator. For example, type of five returns number, type of string five within double quotes returns a string, type of square brackets five returns an object because arrays are objects in JavaScript, type of an empty object here again returns object and type of undefined returns undefined. However, if you try to do type of null, that returns an object even though null in itself is a primitive data type called null. The reason why the type of null returns object in JavaScript is due to a mistake or a historical quirk in JavaScript. This has existed since the early days of JavaScript and due to backwards compatibility in the language, changing or fixing it might break older websites. All right, so now we've covered the primitive data types as well as object data types and we've covered the type of operator to find the type of any value. Now let's go back a few steps and revise what variables are. When I was first learning programming with C++, this is how we understood what variables were in programming. And I think this will also help you understand the concept of reference and values better. Think of a variable as a box that holds some sort of value. Each box has an identifier or a label that is used to access the value within that box. So that identifier helps you identify that box. For example, if you create let x equals to 10, in this case, x is the identifier for this variable. Using this x identifier, you can access the value that is stored within this variable, which is 10 in this case. And since the let keyword allows you to reassign a value to this variable throughout its lifetime, you can change the value that is stored within this box. For example, you could do let x equals to 10. On the next line, you could do x equals to 20. And on the next line, you could do x equals to hello world. But if this box or this variable was used creating the const keyword instead, then you could only assign or you could only put a value inside of this box once during initialization and you cannot change it throughout its lifetime. Now these boxes or variables are simply just storage locations in memory. Place where these variables or boxes are stored has some sort of address known as the memory address. Now in the case of primitive data types, the values of primitive types are stored directly in that box or are stored directly at that memory address. For example, let's say you have a variable called a. So let a equals to 10. So in this case, the identifier of this variable is a. And let's say the memory address, just for illustration purposes, is this. And the value that it holds is 10. Primitive data types 
wherever they are, are stored in memory, hold the value directly that they are assigned. If we would create another variable called b, let b equals to 10, then again, a new variable will be created, some new memory address will be allocated, and then at that memory address, the identifier b will store the value 10 inside of it. So these are two different variables that exist in different locations in the memory, but both of them hold the same value 10. However, when you try to compare two variables that hold a primitive data type, during this comparison, the value that these two variables hold will be compared. If you would do a triple equals b, the value 10 will be compared to the value 10 and this will print true. Let's take another example. Now, in this case, again, I've done let a equals to 10, but for initializing b, instead of directly assigning it the value 10, I've used a to initialize it instead. For primitive data types, when you use another variable to assign a value, so in this case, a copy will be created. So when you do let b equals to a, since a holds the value 10, some new memory will be allocated to this variable b, and a copy of the value that is stored inside of a will be stored inside of b. So again, in this case, a and b exist in different locations in the memory, and both of them hold the value 10. Again, in this case, if you would do a triple equals b, it will again print true. Since in comparisons between primitive data types, the values stored at those locations are compared. Now let's see how objects are stored in memory. Objects are often called reference types in JavaScript. Unlike primitive types, instead of storing the value directly inside of those variables, objects instead store a reference to that value somewhere else in memory. So you're storing references to the objects instead. That's why they are called reference types. So this is what I mean. When you create an object, let obj equals to name John, some memory is allocated to this object value. That memory stores the properties and the methods associated with that object. Then the variable obj is also created in memory. And in this case, instead of this obj variable, storing the value of the object directly Instead, it stores a reference, it stores the memory address of the actual value instead. This means that the memory address of the actual value is stored inside of the object variable. So in this case, obj will not store this name John, instead it will store a memory address of the actual value. You can test this reference nature of objects using this code. I've created a constant called obj1 and I've given it a property name and the value that I've assigned to this property is John. And I've created another object, obj2, and again, this object has the same property and values as obj1. But this is how they will look like in memory. When you create both of these objects, these values are assigned some memory. Both of these objects are stored at separate locations and then both of these variables, obj1 and obj2, store the respective addresses of their values. So let's say obj1 stores this memory address or this reference and obj2 stores this reference. So when you compare to object data types in JavaScript, instead of comparing the value that these objects refer to, the memory address or the references will be compared instead. So if you would do obj1 triple equals to obj2, this will print false because both of them are storing separate references. These are two different references. The value that they are holding are different. Now let's see what happens if I use obj1 to assign a value to obj2. Now again, obj2 will store the same reference as obj1. So the reference that obj1 holds will be copied inside of obj2. So now in this case, obj1 and obj2 both point or refer to the same value in memory. That's why in this case, if you try to do obj1 triple equals obj2, this now prints true. Therefore, if you try to update the property values by doing something like obj2 dot name equals to Jane, since both of the objects refer to the same value in memory, this will update the common value from John to Jane. If you try to print the value of object one and object two, both of them will now print name set to Jane. You can try running this code example and print the values of both the objects to check for yourself. Now let's take a look at another example. So after doing object two equals to object one, what if I update the value of object one equals to name Jane? Will object two also be updated? The answer is no. So when you do object one equals to name John, so similarly how when you first created this object one, 
example, when you do object one name John, it stores this object value at some memory location and then assigns object one a reference to this value. So when you reassign it again, the similar process will happen. This new value will be stored somewhere else in memory and then the reference will be updated inside of object one. So now object two and object one refer to different memory locations. So even if you did object one equals to name John, it stores the same properties and values. It still creates a new value in memory and then stores a new reference inside of it. That's why if you try to do object one triple equals to object two, now it prints false. Both of them store different references. I hope now you understand why objects are called as reference types. Now let's talk about two important concepts, pass by value and pass by reference. Let's start with primitive types again. Let's see what happens when you pass primitive data types around in functions. When you pass primitive values to functions, a copy of that value is created. Let's understand this with the help of an example. So I have a function called set name that accepts a parameter called name. And inside of this value, Jane to name. Outside of this function definition, I have created a new variable called name and I've assigned it the value John. Not to be confused here, the name variable inside of the set name function is a different variable than the name variable in the outer scope. So the name variable inside of this function is actually shadowing the variable in the outer scope. So just note that these are two separate variables. If you don't understand shadowing, you should watch the let and const video in this series. Now let's dissect this code. So when you do let name equals to John, this is how it will look like in memory. The variable name will hold the value John directly inside of it because it's a primitive data type. Then when you call the function set name and pass it this variable name, now when the set name function receives this name, it actually receives a copy of this name. It's not the same variable. So the name variable inside of this function is different than the name variable outside of this function. So let me make it clearer to you. Let's rename the parameter here to name to just for clarity. So this is just an identifier. It still works the same as before. I've just renamed it for better clarity. You can think of it as doing something like this name to equals to name. So in this case, name to will be a separate variable that will be created in memory and a copy of the value that is stored in name will be assigned to name2. When you do name2 equals to Jane inside of this function, you're manipulating or you're updating the value inside of this name2 variable. So the name1 variable does not get affected at all because the value that you are updating is at a completely different memory address. That's why after calling this function, when you try to print the value of name, it still prints John. This behavior is also known as pass by value or call by value. Now let's see what happens if you pass objects to functions. So this is my updated code here. Set name function now accepts a person object and inside of this function, we are updating the property name on person and setting it to Jane. Outside of this function, I have created an object called person. Let's call the parameter for set name person one instead. Now outside of this function, I've created an object called person and I've set the value of the name property to John. Now let's see how this person object will be represented in memory. So when you do let person equals to this value, this value will be stored at some place in the memory and the person variable will hold a reference to this value. This is how it will look like in memory. Now when you call set name person, the value that will be assigned to person one will be a copy of this reference. So you can think of it like this, person one equals to person. So remember the code example from before, when you use another variable to assign an object value, in this case, a copy of the reference of that object is copied to the second object. So when you do person one equals to person, a new variable will be created in memory called person one and it will store a copy of the value that is stored inside of person, which is it will create a copy of the reference to the same value in memory. So even though these are two different variables, both of them are storing the same reference. They are storing the same value, which is a reference to a common value in memory. That's why in this case, when you try to do person one dot name equals to Jane inside of the set name function. Now you are directly accessing the name property at that memory location and updating it. 
So when you do person one dot name equals to Jane, the actual value is updated. And when you try to print console dot log person after calling set name, that's why person object is also updated because both of them refer to the same value in memory. So this is also known as pass by reference because you're passing a reference to the function and that reference can be used to directly manipulate the value at that particular memory location. Now let's see what happens if you reassign person one completely inside of set name. So what if instead of doing person one dot name equals to Jane, what if you do person one equals to a new object name colon Jane. Now in this case name colon Jane, this object will be assigned some value in memory. And then the reference to person one will be updated to this new memory location instead. So now person one refers to a completely different object in memory as compared to person. Now both of them refer to two different objects. So that's why now if you print console.log person after calling set person, it does not affect the original object at all. So now in this syntax, it sort of behaves like pass by value. So that's why reassigning a value to person one inside of this function does not affect the outer object at all. So this quote snippet now acts like pass by value instead. This can often be confusing because when you try to access the property and then try to manipulate it using the dot notation and then the original object will also be updated but if you completely reassign it a value then the original object won't be updated. So objects kind of behave like an intermediate between pass by value and pass by reference even though most developers refer to this behavior as pass by reference only but a more specific term for this behavior is called call by sharing. I've not seen it used as much in different articles online about objects in JavaScript but this is what I found on Wikipedia. Call by sharing also known as pass by sharing, call by object or call by object sharing is an evaluation strategy that is an intermediate between call by value and call by reference. So it is a combination of the two. It is used by many modern languages such as Python, Java, Ruby, JavaScript, Scheme, Apple Script, OCaml, and ML, etc. The term call by sharing as used in this article is not in common use, so you won't find it commonly used when talking about JavaScript. The terminology is inconsistent across different sources. Most probably this object behavior will be referred to as call by reference or pass by reference instead of call by sharing. Now, before we end this video, I have a practice question for you. I have a function called manipulate array that accepts one parameter. So it accepts an array as a parameter, then it does array.push5, then it reassigns array this new array value, and then it returns this array. Now, outside of this function, I've created a list with four elements, one, two, three, four, and then I've called this manipulate array function with the list, and then I've printed the value of list. Then I have used the return value of this manipulate array to reassign a value to list, and then I've again printed the value of list. So what will be the output of these two console statements? You can find the answer to this question on my Instagram, which I've linked in the description box below. I'll see you in the next video.